Hey, oh, that's close. Twilight Mist here. Happy Sunday to you. This is going to be different. This isn't a kiss session. This is going to be a Moldavite stream of consciousness. Some things that have been kind of like running around in my head. And it's Moldavite because <laughs> I'm wearing my Moldavite earrings. Yay! My birthday present to myself last month. Okay, anyways, um, if you don't know what Moldavite is, look it up, but I guess I'll explain it just for this video so um, people will know. So Moldavite, um, it doesn't originate on Earth. It is supposedly caused by a comet that struck the Earth, and it's of extraterrestrial origin. It's more of a crystal than it is a silica-based crystal, than it is um, any kind of stone, really. Um, it's a life-altering catalyst. It's very powerful in its energies. Um, it's called the Stone of Transformation because it accelerates one's personal and spiritual evolution. But <laughs> the way it does it, it's equivalent in the tarot cards. It's equivalent is the tower. If you don't know what the tower is, it shows a tower with lightning striking it people falling out and the buildings crumbling off the cliff into the ocean. It's like when the universe steps in and just smacks you upside the head and says, fuck your plans. This is what you're doing. This is what needs to change and you're going to change it right now. Yeah. It's forceful. It's abrupt. It'll turn your life upside down and uh, it's blunt as fuck. So yeah, there is the theme for all of my Moldavite video series after this one so forewarned you're forewarned <laughs> okay so um you know i already put a video out about energy equals relationship everything is energy um an exchange of energy which is essentially a relationship giving and take push and pull we live in electromagnetic universe not an electric it's electromagnetic Push, pull, give, take. Polar opposites, connections, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, this is about you, actually. Uh, again, relationship starts with you. Most people don't know themselves as well as they think they do. You need to know yourself. And I was thinking about this, like, how can one really know thyself, right? So, um... Uh, scripture actually came to mind. Some scriptures, I don't know if this is in order, but this is what came to mind, so I'm just going to run with it because this is my stream of consciousness, and that's why we're here. So, um, how did God form the world? It's kind of like, it starts out with, you know, God hovered over the face of the deep, right? We are deep, still waters. This aspect of ourselves is a very small fraction of what we really are. And we have to kind of like dive in and dig deeper to get to know who we really are. So you got to have quiet contemplation and meditation. You can't just be praying and asking for everything. Begging and pleading and whatever and giving your power away and asking for someone else to give you the power. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a question for spirit that you need clarity on, if you have an intent that you would like to put forth to better your life. Communicate that clearly, but um, you won't really get to the bottom of that until you start to know yourself well. And most people think they do know themselves pretty well, but because of the way our lives work and the way we're um, programmed to function at an early age, um, we tend to not really know ourselves as well as we think, and we've absorbed a lot of garbage. So. Um, sometimes we won't really know an aspect of ourselves until a situation or experience presents itself where we, oh, <laughs> we know in the moment, we know in the experience, we thought we knew beforehand, but in the experience, the truth comes out, right? So seek to know yourself as much as possible, all right? So God hovered over the face of the deed. Go into meditation, have quiet contemplation, make sure you've got that me time, however you do that. If you do that, getting in your bliss zone, surfing on the ocean, 
running in the woods, you know, in the canyons, um, doing art, you know, whatever. We all have our ways, right? Just make sure you get that kind of meditation and reflective time for yourself because we all need it. And most people are too busy, distracted with crap to do that, right? Then what comes next? God divided the waters above and below. But first he hovered there for a real long ass time. So you won't know it's really you until you spend that time. You won't be able to separate the truth of who and what you are from the programming, from other people's assumptions and projections onto you, right? And then uh, what comes next? God spoke, right? And really, it's not God spoke. That's a mistranslation. Um, I forget how it's really translated. I'm too tired at the moment to look into it, but God spoke. Um, any kind of sound is a frequency. And when the frequency hits your ear, it's a vibration that the brain then translates. So when you're speaking, you're speaking a frequency of like thought, right? Of intent, but you're joining it with a vibration of emotion for unification. And when the thought comes down to the heart, and the feeling comes up from above into the heart and it unifies, it goes out as a unified field, a clear intent, a clear decree, right? This is how we create. And then let there be light. There's illumination. Suddenly you can see, suddenly you understand more. And then you can see, yeah, like God saw it was good. Because it is good to know yourself. It is good to have clarity. It's good to be secure in who you are and where you stand. Because most of us really aren't that secure. At least not as much as we think. Such is life. To experience. So, um, I kind of bring this up because I'm, I'm a part of a, an Abraham Hicks uh, Law of Attraction group on Facebook. And someone was sharing how um, a painful life experience, how um, she found that her husband was cheating a year ago, and I guess he's like moving out in a day or two, they just broke it to the kids, she's like in the whole grief process, but she came in sharing this personal information saying, I know I created this, and I kind of went, um, wait, no, um, fuck that, mm -mm. no, 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 <laughs> you do not create for anyone but yourself, so, if you are creating with anyone else, it's therefore a co-creation. So it's not fully your creation. If you're in a relationship with someone, that's a co-creation. So, yeah. Because you don't create for the other person. They create for themselves. So, I mean, anything that comes into your creation bubble, if you didn't personally create it all by yourself, there's something in your energetic frequency, your programming, your resonance, your vibration that allows for it to come forth into your experience. It doesn't mean it's your creation though, but there's something in you that allows it to enter because once you know yourself well enough, once you make your intents clear, once you push away the bull crap, once you strip away the conditionings, right? The things that you do not want, <laughs> The things that you do not want to experience, the things that could harm you, the things that try to leech and parasite off you and trick you, these things really don't have access to you. The more clarity you have and the more of yourself you're connected with and you understand and follow. You know, because, you know, obviously, and, and then, you know, the relationship that she's sharing it shows the energy dynamic. She's more of a passive victim position. He's more of a perpetrator, slightly aggressive dynamic, right? So there's that whole, you know, that whole push and pull. So if you know yourself well enough before you go into a relationship, you can actually avoid a lot of this stuff. If you get rid of all the programming, expectation bullshit, and the religious bullshit, 
Because a lot of times we come into relationships thinking we're just going to be able to overcome everything by the force of our love, by the force of our will, you know? And that's not a bad thing to aspire to, to be quite honest, but that's generally not enough. And then most people, you know, if you don't know yourself well enough, essentially you're going into a relationship to fulfill a program, to fulfill or to fill a hole in you, right? No one can fill anything in you except you. You have to fill your own cup first. And then when your cup is overflowing, you share that overflow with everyone around you. And the more you're able to do that, the more overflow and abundance there is for everyone around you. That's the only way it works. So, um, yeah, just wanted to make that pretty clear. <laughs> so how do we do this? How do you like know yourself besides just, you know, the concepts of, you know, what I just shared? What well, popped into mind was something that the Bashar says, you know, Bashar is like a channeled enter entity or whatever, just like all of scripture is channeled writings from spirit, but no one's clarifying what spirit, everyone's assuming it's God speaking, every scroll that makes up the Bible and all the other scrolls that were not included in the Bible, channeled writings, technically anything anyone says is a spell, technically anything anyone writes is the writings, the words of God, from the writings of, or so the word of God from Harry Potter says, expecto Patronus. <laughs> or, you know, you know, romantic, romance novels, whatever. Ooh, God's kinky. <laughs> yeah, I'm tangenting, sorry. Anyways, I'm saying all this just because our tool is to use our imagination and to steer our toroidal field with our imagination. So let's break down imagination. Beshar says, I, I like to think of it as, you know, I, but also third eye. I, magi, nation. <laughs> I thought that was pretty heavy. But if you break it down, here's the thing. A nation is a large body of people or individuals. Your body is made up of individual cells. Okay? Um, a large body of people that is sufficiently conscious of its unity to possess a government that is peculiarly its own particularly its own. Government means govern to control meant the mind. You control your own mind, steer it in the direction you want once you have clarity with the unity of your body, right? Right, okay. And then magi, the magus is the individual singular term for the magi, because the magi is plural, which is kind of backwards to English. But anyways, the magus is a hereditary, hereditary male Zoroastrian priesthood that understood, held, and taught the spiritual, esoteric, and scientific knowledge of their age. And we know them as the three magi, most popularly, most, you know, commonly that went to go pay tribute to baby Jesus because they recognized him as a very evolved soul that they were anticipating arriving in the world, which they knew was going to hold a greater wealth of esoteric and spiritual knowledge and expression that even they could currently comprehend. And it's another trinity too. <laughs> <laughs> the three wise men. So, yeah. So, I, the magi or the magician of my nation, <laughs> go out and play like children. Use your imagination. Create. Know yourself. It all has to come down to you. It all has to start with you. Because, like, no one's going to fill that hole in you. No relationship is going to fill that hole. You have to fill it yourself 
first. Because if you don't, you're just going to go into a relationship and it's going to implode. <laughs> and it's not only your life that, you know, you're imploding all over. It's everyone else's life and their family and their friends. And if you've got kids, your kids. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm bringing all this up to flow into the next topic, which is a kind of weird topic, which I didn't really believe in completely a couple months ago. But... I kind of got a download about it, so yeah. So this relates to uh, twin flames, soulmates, and karmics. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Okay, so twin flames. What twin flames really are is one spirit that mo usually a spirit incarnates into one body. When a spirit joins with the body, it creates the soul because when the spirit joins with the body, it initiates the electromagnetic field that begins to flow. And through the electromagnetic field, the thoughts are created and are able to be formed. The emotions are created and allowed to be formed. The personality is developed. Soul is formed and is able to grow. Okay? So your soul doesn't go anywhere. Your soul is only here. And those soul harvesting things that people worry about, whatever, that's, that's not a thing. So, okay. So anyways, a twin flame. One spirit that instead of incarnating into one body, so complex, it divides itself into two separate body-soul complexes. With one being predominantly male, not the gender, the attributes, analytical, more driven, more, more um, socially creative, like uh, career-wise, more of a workhorse, more analytical, that sort of thing, more right-brained, um, or maybe it's left brain. No, I think it's right brain. If I'm wrong, you can, someone will probably comment and tell me. Anyways, and then the other one is predominantly female, not the gender, but the attributes. More creative, more emotional, more intuitive, more artistic. So yeah, that's what twin flames really are. So um, if you've got a twin flame relationship going on, you need to stop making it about the other person, honestly. Stop making about the other person because everything still comes down to you. You need to get your shit together. Um, the other person, it doesn't matter. Forget about them. Seriously, it does not matter. If they're truly your twin flame, you get your shit together. You align with your own spirit. You get your soul, your body, your thoughts, your emotions in order, and you align with your true inner spirit it will bring you to a higher state of evolution. You will start to evolve, you'll start to grow, you'll start to develop. And if they are actually the other half of your spirit, you will force them, just because of your energetic change, you will force them to start evolving themselves. And as you get aligned with yourselves, they get aligned with their selves. And because you are one, the more aligned you are, the more magnetically attracted you become pulled toward each other. And where you go from there is up to you. Now everyone says it's supposed to be a romantic relationship. You're supposed to be in love. And that's not a guarantee. But let's face it. The way humans function, we get attached to even abusers. You know, we can, what is that called? Um, I forget. Um, where you're kidnapped and you're kept by an abuser for a long time and the victim identifies with them and gets attached to them. I can't think of the word right now. If we can do that <laughs> and you're that connected spiritually to someone else in another body, of course you're going to feel a very strong attraction. That's natural. So naturally you're probably going to want it to be romantic, but there's no guarantee that it has to be. Um, a lot of people say it has to do with soul mission, soul purpose, why you incarnated. Um, and yeah, that's true, but here, see, here's the thing. There's really no difference between twin flame and soulmate, except for the fact that it's one spirit, two bodies, and soulmates is just two spirits in two separate 
body-soul complexes. That's the only difference. When you come together, whether you're soulmates or whether you are twin flames, it is the merging of your two energetic bodies in harmony and complete agreement that creates the the trinity effect the it's like a where two or more are gathered i am there in the midst i am is a very creative it's like i am is the creative force of god source here i am the i am presence right so However, you direct your energies as a couple when you're in that strong harmonic frequency together. Um, that has a very transformative and powerful effect. You can aim it towards your family, aim it towards your community, towards accomplishing career goals, um, world changing goals, saving the world, saving the earth, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's got their own perspective, right? And their own um, strong points, their own passions. So um, one's not better than the other. The only difference is that with twin flames, the dynamic is a little bit trickier because you're not two separate coming in harmony. You're the same coming in harmony. But either way, it still comes down to you. If you get your shit together, you focus on you and you evolve yourself, your soul tribe, everyone that's supposed to be around you to help you accomplish your goals, to help you have that better life that you can share your love with in a healthy, respectful, give and take manner <laughs> that's balanced. All that comes together when you have that um, inner knowing of yourself and self alignment. So stop making it about other people. Really? And then the whole karmic thing. Ugh. Like, karma is the whole energy going out and returning to you. If you put out the bad karma, the bad deeds, the bad energies, it returns to you. Every relationship is karmic. Every relationship is karmic. The only relationship that is not karmic is the relationship you have with yourself, technically. And even then, sometimes it's yeah, even that can be a little bit karmic. I mean, it does still boomerang on us. So even that's kind of karmic. So calling any of these relationships that are codependent, fucked up, clinging, where one is chasing the other and the other is abusive or whatever, that's not a real thing. <laughs> Let's just stop focusing on the labels and just work on yourself. Everything really just comes down to working on yourself. And that would be the whole kiss message in this Moldavite stream of consciousness. So, yeah. Okay, so um, beyond the relationship, there's the whole sex thing. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Just had to. Just had to. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, before I do the sex thing. Um, all right, so you need to be really honest really not just know yourself you need to be really fucking blunt and honest with yourself and once you're really fucking blunt and honest with yourself then you can be really honest with everyone else and but don't do that as bluntly do that a little bit more gracefully if possible a little bit more compassionately you know bad karma you don't want to be intentionally harmful with your truth if you can avoid it right if you're um Going into a relationship or stuck in a relationship that you realized early on that um, it's bad. It wasn't for you. You didn't know it until you got in the relationship and already made the commitment. How long are you going to lie to yourself? How long are you going to lie to everybody else? Don't be a fucking asshole. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to everyone else. You are not... <laughs> I mean, come on, you're robbing yourself of your joy. You're robbing yourself of your purpose and your drive to do what you truly feel you want and need to do in your heart, right? And not only are you robbing yourself, you're robbing the partner that's in the relationship with you. And you're making a real bad example for any kids you might have. And you're kind of lying to everyone that was involved in being notified, family and friends and whatever, of the whole 
relationship. And honestly, <laughs> I mean, that's not easy. It's going to be painful, of course, obviously. And I'm not trying to say this to be a homewrecker, but I mean, give me a break. Religion and culture is there to conform you and to make you get stay stuck. The way everything is structured right now, it's not there to benefit you. It's kind of there to make you stay stuck. And um, everyone who is happy for you has a vested interest in keeping things at a status quo. That's kind of how everyone's uniformly programmed. Status quo, status quo. Once you find a place that you're comfortable with, stay there. Don't ever change. That never works. That never works. So be honest. Make the changes you need to make as gracefully and as early on as you can. Don't drag it out, please. I mean, you're robbing yourself of energy and of time and you're robbing everyone else of energy and time. And no one is ever gonna completely agree with you and back you up when you need to make these changes. They're just not. People like to get invested in other people's relationships and enjoy it. But honestly, it's not about anyone but you and your truth and how honest you're being in the next closest intimate relationship you have and you owe it to them to be as honest with them as you're being with yourself just do it because you know you waste a lot of time and energy and the longer you sit in those energies lying to yourself the more you drain away your life force. And talking about life force, now we're going to talk about sex. Yeah, sex magic. Okay. I don't have much time left, so I'm going to kind of rush. So sorry about this, but here we go. Um, okay. We're mammals. Our bodies like to be acknowledged. We like to feel good, right? Um, but if what, what does the French say about sex? They call it what? The little death, right? There's a reason for that. You know, when you have sex, babies are made, right? Because sex, especially orgasm, is the most creative force and energetic release that your body can create and maintain. And it feels real good. Bonus! But the whole point is, this is supposed to create life and not just physical life. It's supposed to create life in something, right? So um, anyone you are fucking, having a booty call with, if you're not, I mean, even if you're married to them and you realize, I didn't know this person half as well as I thought and I don't really want to be in this relationship anymore. Anytime you're having sex, you're not, you're merging your body, your energies, and in your soul with that other being. Any issues they have become your issues. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and energetically. That's four huge fucking categories. You're taking on their crap and they're taking on your bull crap as well. And all you guys thinking you're so great or girls thinking you're so great, catching all the men, catching all the women, whatever. Do you know how many Spirits and demons, well, I wouldn't say, well, maybe demons. Do you know how many spirits, how many mindsets, how many control factors, how much negative bullshit you have absorbed into you from carelessly throwing your energy around like this and merging with just whatever and whoever just because they look good and feel good for a moment? It, it's... <sighs> It's alarming. <laughs> I'll just say that it's really alarming. Um, there should be some kind of respect, mutual friendship, care, qualities that you would like to have. If you don't feel like marrying them, if you don't feel like having children with them, if you don't want to be like them in any way, shape, or form, hello, don't fuck them. Just don't, okay? Um, the body needs release. The body needs to be pleasured as a mammal this is kind of normal there's nothing really shameful about it that's the way we're biologically structured right so don't waste your energy 
masturbating to some hot guy or some hot chick because you're throwing them your energy or having a sick fantasy or whatever. You're throwing away your energy towards wherever you're focusing on when you do that, when you come. So um, before you do all this, if you, if you have an issue not going like more than a couple days without masturbating, take some time to meditate. Focus on what your goals are, who you want to become, what you want to achieve, what that will look and feel like when you're in that space of achieving it and living it. Get it solid in your mind, in your emotions, in your experiential world, imagination-wise. And when you go to pleasure yourself at the point of climax, because it's sex magic, everything we say and do is magic, so get over the whole magic aspect, okay? That's just part of our creative world and how we create, right? At the point of climax, pull in that visualization, that feeling, that presence, that goal that you want to achieve and become and direct that energy towards that because you are birthing something every time you climax. You're planting a seed of creation, an explosion of energy. Feed it into something that you want to create. Now I'm not talking about going out and doing other magics like blood over intent. For God's sakes, don't do that. There's so many interdimensional things that require blood to enter into our realm because of our DNA and our energetic frequencies. It gives them an access to hack your body complex when you're offering blood. Don't do that shit. But because we need to come, we don't need to come, but <laughs> some people need to come, but wow, <laughs> I'm tangenting really bad right now. Um, yeah, it's natural. Use it wisely. Use your energy wisely. Express it wisely. <laughs> Direct it wisely. Don't use it carelessly. Because I think that's where a lot of these issues come from. That nobody realizes. Because we're attaching ourselves to certain people, places, things energetically with our imagination. When we are pleasuring ourselves or we're sleeping with our mate if we're married and what we're thinking about somebody else kind of thing. <sighs> yes. Okay. So, um, I'm rambling a bit now. I think my stream of Moldavite consciousness is over. So there we go. Um, be wise with your energy. It all comes down to you. It all originates with you. It all returns to you. Know yourself, go within and know yourself. You're a piece of God source creator in this greater ocean of God source creations. Go out, do good. I love you. Twilight missed out. <laughs>